This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, straight out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And folks, here we are, September the 22nd, 2022. And you know what? This is the first time I've ever had a guest on the show of a movie that is currently out. I mean, I had somebody from uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey on not too long ago, but that film has not been released yet. So that was a first for that. But folks, we have a 2022 has been a great year for horror films. We've had X. We've had Pearl. We've had Black Phone. We got Halloween Ends coming up. Well, folks, I just saw Barbarian uh, very recently and quite impressed with it. Uh, loved it. The reviews have been great. And the best thing is that you don't know where it's going. Well, tonight on the show, I have the barbarian, I'm going to say himself, but on the, on the movie, it's herself. <laughs> spoiler alert do you want to give a spoiler alert <laughs> well they <laughs> well barbarian yeah but you know you're 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 like kane hodder as jason you know i mean kane hodder's under the makeup you're under the makeup but folks we give you the wonderfully talented matthew patrick davis how do you do matthew I do good. How you? How do you do, Greg? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Now, that's not a spoiler at all. It's just, I'm going to tell you, when I look it up, I was surprised to find out that, of course, then it gets kind of like with X. It took me uh, a moment to realize Mia Goth played both those parts. Yeah, I mean, I just mean that my character in itself is kind of, you know, for those that haven't seen the movie, it's a, it's a spoiler, you know? Well, I think part you know what? Of, uh, part of the fun of how they marketed the movie is they don't reveal anything beyond just the first 20 minutes, which is, like, pretty great. Um, yeah, but you so know anyway, what? So, yeah, this, what? This is just being recorded, so uh, it'll be unlisted uh, for a while until I release it publicly. So if this the movie will be out of theaters and probably on blu-ray yeah before. Exactly. so you're safe so no no worries no yeah. worries so for anyone listening if you haven't seen barbarian just hit pause and then go go get the blu-ray go watch it and then come back and listen to the rest of this yeah yeah but um nonetheless i was um quite taken with the movie and it was like Wow, I was so happy to hear back from you, you know, because um, you are, as far as I'm concerned, the star of the movie. Oh, well, don't tell Georgina Campbell or Justin Long or Bill Skarsgård that. Well, they don't have to know. Okay, great. I They're mean, not... look look at it this way. You're stronger than the clown from It. I know. I bash his brains. Spoiler alert. And uh, let's face it. Justin Long kind of had it coming. If he didn't learn from Jeepers Creepers not to go in places he's not supposed to, he's he's a hopeless case. And then he loses his eyes again. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> I know. Is that like a callback? I haven't asked them. Uh, I haven't asked Zach that. Is that if that was on purpose? You know what? We need to talk about that because it's like Zach Kreger. You mean Miss March? Zach Kreger directed this movie. I know. Yeah, I mean, like a skilled comedian, whitest kids you know, sketch group, funny, funny dude, funny actor. Who knew he had this uh, dark, disturbing side to him? Well, it's a good thing that uh, you weren't grabbing hold of him because uh, in Miss March, I mean, uh, when they startled him, startled him, he shit all over the place. <laughs> the hospital. Did you see Miss March? I, uh, I'm sorry, Zach. I have not watched uh, Miss March yet. Although I think he had, I don't think he speaks fondly of that movie or that experience, so I think he wouldn't be offended that I said I haven't seen it. Oh, really? I had Jeff Mead on, who played Fireman Rick from it. I actually, a lot of people hated it. I actually enjoyed it. I found it funny, but, uh, you know, he's in a coma through part of the movie, and uh, let's just say um, Trevor Moore tries to use a baseball bat to revive him and to get him out of his coma. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh boy. And then hijinks ensue. Yeah. Well, you know, when you wake up uh, from being in a cobra or something, you know, eventually stuff's going to cut loose from you. So when you got a nurse hosing down your backside, poor Zach Gregor. <laughs> Wow. Well, if I, if I didn't want to see it before, now I definitely really do. I got to see this. Uh, yeah, I got it here on Blu-ray. I thought it was hilarious. But yeah. um, oh, I feel bad he doesn't think fondly of it. I, I, I think he was hilarious in it. Him and uh, rest in peace, Trevor Moore. We lost him way too young. I know. Very sad. Very sad. Yeah. But uh, I was like, Zach Cracker. Well, I don't know too many Zach Craigers, so I'm like, this is a Miss March guy. Wow. He's got a dark side. <laughs> I think he's got a, a good horror name, you know, Craiger. Craiger. Like, mm -hmm. it sounds like, a, you know, like Wes Craven. Or Zach Freddy Krueger. Krueger. Craiger. Craven. I mean, it's perfect. How about uh, uh, Freddy Craiger? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> younger brother there you go what was it like working him with him as a uh, as a director uh it was great i mean he was like he kept things light he's a funny dude um so even though we were doing dark and disturbing weird things uh we were also able to laugh about it and um yeah so i i felt like i was in good hands and he moved fast like we shot everything fast and um when we would be moving on i'd be like are you sure you don't want to get another take or whatever and he'd be like no trust me trust me like i wouldn't move on unless we got it and and sure enough uh i i i, I believe him like yeah we got everything yeah and you know i know you mentioned spoiler alert earlier but i'm gonna tell you this is not a movie you can predict because i'm gonna tell you the movie goes up to a point then it switches gears then it goes up to a point and then it switches gears again. Yeah. And I'm talking about the introductory of certain characters. Mm -hmm. And that was part of one of the things I loved about the movie. Yeah, me too. You know, because it's like, uh, wow, where's this going? Mm -hmm. You know, and where it goes, it adds to it, you know, like, um, ISA, you got to be proud to be part of this movie because I I I, I was quite pleased that we we uh, have a horror film out there that's not just some hack and slash. You know, this is one that's got a lot of thought go into it, and uh, and it's got likable characters, ones that you can well for the most part relate to. Hope nobody can relate to what Justin Long's character was involved with, but exactly. <laughs> oh, it's likable characters, a likable rapist. And then uh, <laughs> old Frank, a likable uh, serial murderer rapist. Yeah. yeah, but I gotta say, uh, I was very pleased with it. How long did it take you in the makeup chair for that? Uh, for the first uh, makeup tests, they those were like five or six hour sessions, uh, but they got it down to a science by the end of it. They got it down to three hours, so it would be like five or six. Uh, people from the makeup team all kind of working on me all at once. And then we got it down to three hours. Now, at, when you had the makeup on, did Playboy call you? <laughs> I know. My favorite comment I saw was, uh, I can't wait till this ends up on Mr. Skin, you know, which is <laughs> a website for, for nudity in movies where usually you go to see, ooh, a pretty lady's boobies or whatever. I'm like, is this going to be my first Mr. Skin entry? That's pretty funny. You yeah, but I don't know. know. No, I, I've, I haven't gotten the call from uh, from Playboy yet for their centerfold, you know, but I'm expecting it any day. I think they should. I think, I so. think they should. You should win the Skinanime Awards, as Mr. Skin calls it. Oh, that's what it's called? The Skinan Skinatomy Awards? Yeah. Like Academy, but Ski Anatomy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I should. Yep. Uh, I've heard him on Howard Stern a number of times. It's where oh. he comes up with his stuff. I don't know. Yeah. What a gig. <laughs> yeah. But uh, nonetheless, uh, great stuff uh, out of there. How, talk about the getting the part. Did you audition to the, for this or did Zach Kreger know you? 
No, I didn't know Zach. Um, he, my manager had sent him like some of the stuff I'd done before in prosthetics and stuff. Um, and we got on a zoom call and he was like, so is this even anything you would want to do? And I was like, why? Cause prosthetics are uncomfortable. And he's like, no, cause you'd be naked, man, ass out. And I was like, well, but I'm uh, not a large naked feral woman, you know, so I won't be totally naked, right? So there's going to be some coverage. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, because at first when I read the script, I thought it would be like a full body suit or that kind of thing. But it was actually just just pieces. And then sure enough, it was it was my butt. My butt was out on set, which was a new experience for me. Um, but um, and then after that phone call, he was like, so listen, if you could just put yourself on tape. Um, at the time, there was a scene in the script where m the mother bites the head off of a rat and feeds it to AJ. Um, and so he's like, just grab a hot dog or something out of your fridge and, and just do that scene. And so I was in this room. Uh, I had uh, towels all over the floor. My little dog was sitting there watching me. And uh, I just like turned out all the lights, turned on this weird side light and I was going to get a sausage or something, but then I had a jar of pickles in my fr uh, fridge. So that turned out to be the move. Cause you get a good, you get a good crunch and then, uh, and then you get a good drool. The pickles just create like this alien xenomorph drool that was just coming out of my mouth and onto the towels on my floor. And so, oh, and also he was like, and I hate for, I hate myself for asking this, but can you take your shirt off in the self tape? And so I took my shirt off and, but it looked weird me ha being in shorts. So I just took my pants off too. And I was just there in my underwear, uh, biting the quote unquote head off of a pickle. And, uh, that was certainly the weirdest thing I have ever shot and sent to a person that I've only just met over zoom. But apparently that was the booker. So tell me, uh, was the dog disappointed that you didn't use a sausage or a hot dog? <laughs> yeah, I bet my dog would have been more interested in the hot dog than the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. No, uh, you were fantastic in this. Talk about getting into character, you know, especially the way you move and stuff uh, through those deep, dark, ominous tunnels. Yeah. And they really were dark in real life. So when I got into the tunnels, it, I, I would just kind of run around in there and try and like feel my way around and try to get used to them the way that the mother would be, you know, would know them like the back of her hand. Um, and like physically, I got into the character by, I mean, I, as soon as I got the part, I'm like, okay, I need to get into the best shape of my life in three weeks because <laughs> I just needed to be prepared to do whatever was called upon me and be, you know, feral and be in like a deep crouch a lot or whatever. Um, and I did that. And then also the director, Zach, asked me, he was like, again, I hate myself for asking this, but whatever you can do to be as lean as possible. And uh, so I actually like tried to lose weight and I'm like a skinny guy naturally. Um, but in my life, I've, I just kind of, I had been actively working against my good metabolism. And so it was just a matter of like, uh, just encouraging my metabolism to work in the way it does and just, you know, eat salads instead of pasta all the time and maybe exercise, go to the gym, heard of it. Wow. What a thought. Um, and then psychologically to get into the character, I was pleased that well, I wasn't pleased, but I was grateful that Zach, he asked me to look up feral children, um, which I didn't even know what that meant really, but that once I started YouTubing it, I found all these videos that are deeply, deeply depressing uh, about kids who were raised in cages or treated like animals in their formative stages and they weren't spoken to and therefore never learned to speak. And they would show them now like 20 years later and they would describe them as like a two-year-old in a 20-year-old's body and that just made everything make sense about the mother, the fact that she was nonverbal, the fact that she just like ba 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 was the only thing in the script that she ever said, and the fact that she was kind of an innocent and just like kind of a, a child. Uh, and and so anytime she is attacking or murdering or something, it's like 
just having a tantrum or she doesn't understand it or it's protective. She's protective of Tess. So it, I was so grateful that he gave me the gift of like creating a quote unquote monster that I could empathize with mm -hmm. as opposed to just being someone that just goes like, boo, you know, rawr. <laughs> yeah. And that definitely worked in the movie. Um, here's something I gotta, I gotta say it's, You've ever, you, we've all heard the term, you know, uh, they say, this per make this person your bitch. Well, I guess you could say Justin Long was your bitch in the movie. <laughs> well, I suppose so. I mean, he, uh, <laughs> his characters certainly use that word a lot in the script. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bitch. Um, but I, I thought it was very appropriate because he has... You know, his character has been abusing others and walking through life without considering uh, consent. And so mm -hmm. it's a little bit of comeuppance that he should be forcibly breastfed <laughs> without his consent. I found that so funny. <laughs> I was like, gee, I guess Jeepers Creepers wasn't so bad. <laughs> That's right. Compared to that, he was like, oh, bring me back to that other guy. <laughs> Okay, Talk no, it was so great that uh like he was so nice, so game for everything. We did shoot that scene of uh me biting the head off a rat and baby birding it from my mouth into his mouth. Like mm -hmm. yeah, in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> just like, <laughs> bloody prosciutto spitting it into his mouth. And um and I asked him, I was like, are you, you, you okay with this this is and he's like well it's definitely the grossest thing so we have to do it and uh, that was his attitude throughout and i'm very grateful that he was my scene partner for those weird weird scenes how, how did he ever like break take and laugh during the breastfeeding scene between takes <laughs> he laughed a lot yes <laughs> and i'm glad for that there i think beforehand both he and georgina were um you know, considering like, do we want to stay away from Matt, you know, when he's not in costume or, or even when he is, when he does look like, look like that to like keep the fear going or whatever. I was glad that we didn't have to like stay in character the whole time because when being asked to do these very strange, weird, intimate things, it was nice to have a little levity between takes and then get back into it. Well, Georgia was, uh, played the smarter character. She, mm -hmm. you know, she uh, knew how to play the game and avoid some trouble. But talk about that big, massive bottle. <laughs> I know. It looks like it's from Toontown or something. I I, uh, I don't know where the mother got that giant cartoon bottle. Um, but, uh, yeah, it packs a punch, though, with the hair on it, too. Oh, gross. But uh, Georgina was like, you know what? It's... Uh, this is the less of the two evils. <laughs> poor, drink poor. Just drink it. Yeah, poor Justin just wasn't having it, and, well, he got the more evil. <laughs> yeah, if he had just, if he had just drunk it, like she said, he would have been fine. I think every, everyone would have been fine if they would just listen to Georgina. She's a smart one. She's telling Bill's character, like, no, there's something down there. Don't go down there. And he's just like, dope, da dope. I got to see it myself. Oops, I'm dead. This is the first time I've seen Georgina, you know, and uh, she was great in the movie. She played a great uh, final girl, uh, so to speak, and uh, and um, she packed a punch. And it's always nice to have um, strong women in horror movies, you know. And uh, but um, she was somebody in this film that was kind of like, okay, I see what's going on here. There, how do I get this out? She was half, definitely having a difficult time with those cops. I know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, talk about working with her. Yeah, she was great. She's so great. And it was so fun to see her, the final performance, because she... Like being at a level, that level of fear for a long period of time must be very hard. <laughs> and, but she was able to do it and scream. And, and in the scenes where I got to work with her, where she was at a really like high level of 
fear or anxiety. It was amazing to just see her drop into that. Um, they're doing last looks about to, about to roll and her eyes just well up with tears and she goes, and it was just so fun to, to watch her process and she's so good. Yeah. Well, the other uh, piece of the puzzle, of course, Bill Skarsgård. Um, what, well, how do you like it? You got to, you know, you got to best the it clown. You got the best Pennywise. I know. Raw. I know. <laughs> I know. No pressure. Like it. That was my first day shooting. That was my first day on set. Um, mm -hmm. Was meeting Bill, and also I had just watched the two new it movies um once i knew i'd be working with them I, I i hadn't seen them yet so i'm like oh i should check that out and was of course super impressed with his uh, performance and so <laughs> i'm just like man he has delivered one of the iconic prosthetics performances of the past decade and now now i'm in the prosthetics and uh, no pressure to me uh, but luckily he was very nice and he he, you know, he was like, "Hey, I'm I'm glad it's you and not me. Uh, I hate the prosthetics; they're uncomfortable." And better you than I. Um, I think he liked that it was just his face. And then, um, and then he shared some things about how he came up with the physical vocabulary for for Pennywise, and and that was cool. And then, um, and then yeah, and then bashed his head in, and that was that. You know what I find interesting is because uh, I love the fact that he was cast in this movie. Because yeah. audience are going to have a perception For of sure. him first thing. And what was great was because she arrives at this Airbnb, but it's been double booked and he's there. Audience are never sure about him because we're taught not to trust him because of it. Yeah, and I'm exactly. wondering if that's why Zach Kreger cast him, you know, hey. but um that's what's great about the casting, both of Bill and of Justin, because they both play against type and subvert the expectations of what you think you're going to see. You think Justin's very nice and you think Bill has something shady going on. And mm -hmm. maybe yeah, seems to be the opposite. Now, the other piece of the puzzle, too, Richard Brake appears at some point in this. And it's interesting how things get all kind of light and shiny and Almost uh, almost like he's coming out of a 50s sitcom when he comes out of the, the house at some point, you know, and the neighbors are there waving and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Richard Brake, of course, you know, from a lot of the Rob Zombie movies, he's, uh, he's got that particular voice, you know. Did you uh, have any interactions with him? Yeah, even though we don't interact in the movie um, on camera, uh, we both did the same we worked with the same prosthetics makeup team for the the scene when he has the old age makeup on. And so when I, they were getting me in the prosthetics uh, for a day of shooting. And then when I was done, then he came in and he got in the prosthetics for, for his day. And so we do have like pictures together of us both in the, in the stuff together in the, in the makeup. And, um, and he's, yeah, he's been very nice, like um, to me and, and been like referring me to, horror convention people and uh that's a whole thing apparently and who knows maybe we'll maybe i'll be beginning to go to those things i don't know we'll see <laughs> i recommend you do i started yeah. doing those in 2017 and uh wow they're a lot of fun mm. um i'm doing two this october in fact one a week from today oh yeah up in canada yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm in New Brunswick, Canada. Do you know where that is? I don't. I don't even know. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> You're not an idiot because nobody knows. Uh, really? New, Brun New Brunswick is an hour ahead of uh, New York time. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, but I'm in Atlantic Canada. And uh, no, you're not an idiot at all. You'd never believe it. There's a few people that know where I'm located, but a lot of times when like I, I interviewed uh, Laura from uh, Kill Bill Volume 2, and uh, she was like, I'm Central Time. Aren't I an hour behind you? I said, no, no, I'm two hours ahead of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I'm in that little spot in Canada. Um, we're neighbors with Nova Scotia. 
you know so um yeah we're uh I often joke, I said, when they said that the ultimate warrior in wrestling was from parts unknown, I'd say, oh, he must have been from New Brunswick, Canada. Oh, yeah. <laughs> must have been from here because this is parts unknown. But uh -huh. I just had Tom Matthews on here from Friday the 13th, part six, and he's going to be at both conventions I plan to go to, mm. which uh, one is Horrorama in Toronto, and um, the other is Frightmare in the Falls, which is – Niagara Falls. Okay. And uh yeah, if you haven't gotten the chance to do them, they're a lot of fun. Um uh people will show up, you could yeah, have headshots or uh pictures of you from the movie, your upcoming Playboy spread. <laughs> yeah, I can have little like little milk bottles or little milk cartons that I could sign for people. You know what? It's interesting you say that because we sadly Larry Cohen is no longer with us, but he did a movie called The Stuff. And I know another podcaster who showed up at one of the conventions he was at before he passed and he'd have these little the stuffed cups there and he'd get them he'd sign them for people. Or um, Eric Freeman from Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 does that famous line, it's garbage day. Well, he would have these little miniature garbage cans there that he would sign for fans. Uh, you'd never believe how much stuff like that comes up. So, yeah, if you have like these milk bottles, um, I would go for that. People would probably dig that, especially from Barbarian. Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell if... Uh... I mean, I have no idea. Like, you know, yes, it was it was the number one movie in the country. That's pretty great. Um, you know, but also it's like a slow time at the box office. And I don't know. You know, so it, I can just my worst fears are going to one of these conventions and then just like being at a table by myself with no one in line and just like a single tumbleweed blowing in front of me and then just going, oh, yeah, OK, I'm going to see myself out. But who knows? I, I think I think with the reception that barbarian has gotten so far, I hope that it only builds in popularity uh, as like it goes to digital and Blu-ray and stuff. So we'll see. Uh, and, and when you do the melt bottles, make sure you have some uh, hair on the uh, nipple right. part. <laughs> well, that'll be for extra. You'll, you'll have to pay extra for a hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're there with Justin long, I don't know if he does these, but you know, pay extra and he's going to suck on this. <laughs> you just yeah. grab Justin Long and say, "Where are you needed here?" That he'll have he'll be charging a lot for that. You know, <laughs> so that'll be a a premium a premium buy. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, um, do you have a representative for the cons? Uh, I've I've been talking to some people. Yeah, so yeah, because I know. Uh, well, one person I recommend would be Sean Clark. Oh, great. Well, he's yeah, he's Richards. Uh, Richard Brakes. Perfect. Yeah. I've had Sean on here a couple times, you know? Oh, good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Sounds great. Now, I haven't had Richard Brake on here. I'd love to get him at some point, you know? But um, Sean Clark uh, would be a good one to talk to. But yeah, like I'm thrilled to have you on here because, you know, I mean, yeah, you have Justin Long, you got Bill Skarsgård, but technically, as far as I'm concerned, you're the star of this movie. Wow. wow. You're the barbarian. I, although I don't know, am I? Am I, Greg? You've seen the movie. I've seen the movie. Am I the barbarian? Is the mother the barbarian? Actually, you know what? It's interesting because symbolically speaking, mm -hmm. really, there. when it comes down to it, who is really the barbarian? Right. Who would you think? Because, you know, you got that shady stuff of uh, Justin Long's character, which is kind of barbaric. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, you You've got Frank. Yeah, I I won't even touch. Speaking of spoiler alert, I won't even touch that. But yeah, speaking of barbaric, yeah, we he's probably the most evil character in the movie. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's a spectrum of evil. Evil. Uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you have Richard at the one end, and then you have Justin, and then um, yeah, I mean Keith isn't isn't evil but he you know he still he does have like 
he has some like toxic masculinity going on and he's like not listening to the woman and has to see things for himself and he's doing inappropriate things in that opening scene you know um you know but so, that was the brilliance of casting bill skarsgård because it yeah. puts the odd because he was pennywise it's like do we trust this guy yeah and and the answer is no because he was pennywise <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Georgina seems to be the only one that's straight laced here, you know? She's not barbaric, but she has to be barbaric to survive. Well, yeah, she has to lower herself and uh, infantilize herself, basically, before she can emerge and finally live her life with some agency, which I think is kind of the the arc of, of her character. I mean, her last words are, I can't go back, I can't go back, you know, so absolutely yeah. so uh what do you have coming up um what? well let's see i'm i'm currently rehearsing a play where i'm playing abraham lincoln okay <laughs> so that's normal to go from the mother to abraham lincoln totally normal normal uh-huh um, i've written i've co-written some songs uh with Rob Cantor in uh, for the forthcoming season of The Ghost and Molly McGee, which is a show on the Disney Channel that um, is like fun for kids and adults. It makes me laugh as a grown man. Um, that'll be coming out, I think, in January. And then um, I also have a children's album of songs about dogs called I Love My Dog that is available on the Yoto Music Player. <laughs> But uh, I don't, it's funny, Greg, like my life is just a disparate collection of juxtapositions. Like as I was preparing to play a large naked feral woman last summer, I was also writing kid songs about dogs. <laughs> you own a dog? I own a dog. Yes. His name is Morty. Mm -hmm. and he's a little, uh, he's a little oh that's right why why am i brain screwing here because it's like yeah you were talking about eating that pickle and the dog there yeah, yeah exactly. of course you owned a dog exactly you know? that was that was morty yep i got a kitty and he oh, is good he's avoiding the camera yeah he's he's afraid of the uh feral woman <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry kitty i just bite the head off rats not of cats there you go yeah, yeah you kitty, know. you're safe, you know. Kitties don't like rats either, so we're no. actually allies. A lot of people don't like rats. I'm not a big fan of them either. <laughs> exactly. The rat on set was actually very nice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there was a real <laughs> rat, and uh, he was very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't actually bite off his head. Yeah, you rat. save that for... Uh, uh, crazy uh, musicians out there in the heavy metal world yeah exactly i didn't uh, do the ozzy osbourne <laughs> except with him i think it was a bat i think it was it was a bat right there you go there you go talk did you uh talk about the uh the special effect of that rat yeah they built a fake rat with that with a detaching head um and these little motorized legs which went and uh but it kind of mm, i don't know if it really looked that convincing so they they went to and then they had the real rat on set so there was a shot of me grabbing the actual real rat and almost putting its head in my mouth um and then they cut to uh yeah the torso of the fake rat and then I would hold this like bloody prosciutto and just kind of stretch it like it was tendrils. Um, and then so that became like the detaching head of the rats. We never actually used the the little fake head that they built. Oh, there you go. How'd it taste? <laughs> I mean, and in Bulgaria, where we shot it, we shot it in Bulgaria. There's all this Italian food for some reason. There's all these Italian places. And so they're actually at a, a lot of the restaurants we would go to there would be prosciutto. <laughs> and like Justin said, he, that he ate prosciutto that very night, having just eaten bloody prosciutto from my mouth. And uh, I asked him if he wanted me to baby bird it to him, but he he, he said that was too soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that uh, guitar behind you. Well, what, um, what all the instruments do you play? Is it 
guitar your main thing? No, I mostly play piano, and then okay. I also have an accordion, and then uh, which is piano adjacent. And then um, I never learned how to play guitar until uh, the old global pandemic. I turned quarantine into guitar and teen and finally started teaching myself how to play guitar. I would not have done that without a global pandemic. So that was one of the old silver linings of that. It was I had a lot of time on my hands. So now I can kind of play guitar badly but mostly it's piano it's funny you mention accordion when i hear accordion i think weird al yankovic because he oh, was yeah. a master on accordion and still is i mean yeah. yeah yeah he's still touring and is incredible on the accordion <laughs> yeah so how young were you when you started uh you know on the piano and any of these instruments of course you mentioned the guitar was pandemic but what about your yeah. others yeah, no, I w was in lessons, I think, when I was like four or five and uh, and then stopped in junior high when I started doing theater mm -hmm. and kind of and then kind of retaught myself. And um, yeah, have been playing without lessons uh, to this very day. Um, but yeah. So I noticed it. you've done on your IMDb a lot of television. Now, I don't have my tv set up to watch television i just watch my blu-rays okay. but is there any tv work that uh you've done that uh, that you want to point out that was uh, a challenge or a lot of fun for you to do uh well let's see yeah i mean i've done a smattering of tv things but uh i, don't, I mean like the most recent tv thing i did was this kind of a kid show kind of um like a family friendly show it was called Dwight in Shining Armor and it was I don't know it was fun because I it was like a recurring role and I got to play kind of like an omnipotent god character that was also kind of a jerk to everybody um <laughs> so it was fun to like wield ultimate powers and just be a jerk so that was fun um well, you do a lot of stuff that's uh, family oriented. It must have been interesting uh, getting brought into Barbarian, <laughs> which is I know. <laughs> I hope uh, I hope no one that uh, is like, oh, I love these dog songs for kids. I wonder what else he's done, and then they find my boobs. <laughs> so, how yeah. many songs are on that album for uh, dogs? Uh, Thirteen songs. Yeah. Because you you know you hear a lot of oh baby baby songs, but it's interesting hearing somebody that writes about something a little different. You know, that's why right. there's plenty really love songs. What I why not dog songs? And then also this year I'm going to be working on a follow up to that album, and this is going to be a bunch of songs about dinosaurs. What so. about cats? Now, Skittles is upset back there. I'm sorry, Skittles. <laughs> I have I have written a song about cats called Cats Are Incredible. Uh, I did do that. Um, and yeah, you know what? That could be the third album is one about cats. Although I don't have a cat, so I would have to use my imagination. Well, you don't or, have a dinosaur either. <laughs> good point. Fair point. And honestly, that is actually a bit of a barrier to this next album. The first album flew out of me because I have a dog and mm -hmm. he was a constant muse. And then now I'm really feeling that lack that I don't have a dinosaur to help me out with these songs. So are I have you, to use my imagination. Are you going to uh, prep by watching Jurassic Park? I mean, I've watched that movie a bunch, a bunch of times. Uh, Does it inspire I, songs? Well, one of the first, I've done a handful of things at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, which is a comedy theater in LA and New York. <laughs> and uh, one of the first shows that I wrote there was a half hour Jurassic Park, the musical. So I did already write songs for Jurassic Park. But unfortunately, they were all like, they were very adults and like filthy and dirty. <laughs> well, so, you can always write one about the dinosaur sneezing in Ariane Richards' face there in that scene. <laughs> that's right. The Vegisaurus. The Vegisaurus. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Dino with a cold. There you go. Dino with a cold. There's a song title right there. Yeah. Little Dino has a cold. Dinos, dinos with a cold. Give them some Buckleys. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Do you have any charities that you want to plug and promote on here? Oh my goodness. That, what a, what a good question. Oh. I love to allow my guests if they got anything they're passionate about to, to promote it on here, you know? I mean, I like the, the Sheldrick wildlife trust. They, mm -hmm. uh, help orphaned elephants uh that are that where well, their parents are victims of nice poaching. and uh yeah they're in africa there the sheldrick wildlife trust i dig them uh and then that's the first thing that comes to my mind i don't know what what charities do you like well one that uh i'm involved with is uh for suicide and depression awareness nice. and uh remember the ice bucket challenge when that happened mm-hmm my dad just passed away this year from ALS. He had it for eight years. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I got to see him the morning before he passed. So, I mean, I got to say my piece and whatnot. But after the ice bucket challenge, and fortunately, we lost Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, uh, well, I'm good now. I never, I never had any issues with suicide, but, but depression. I've battled that before, and uh, I think we all have at some point. And um, so one came out for for uh, suicide and depression called the Doubt Fire Face Challenge. <laughs> and it involved taking a pie in the face, and you nominate three people. Mm -hmm. and, and I've had a bunch of my guests uh, um, do this, you know, and I would uh, donate to uh, their charity of their choice. Uh, in return so hmm. yeah well thank you for sharing that i'm sorry about the loss of your uh father um uh, yeah that's uh not not easy i lost my mother uh in 2017 and uh you know yeah that's not fun that's... My, mo my mom's got parkinson's so uh yeah. so but but i love your charity about the elephants because i gotta say at, uh, anytime I'm on here and I'm just watching videos online, a lot of times I watch African wildlife videos yeah. because Africa's got such a diverse bunch of animals. And watching an elephant move somebody's car is pretty, pretty intense, you know, like they'll pick up a car like it's nothing, like like it's one of your little toy matchboxes. Yeah, they're so powerful. And yep. they really – they are so um... – like the 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 elephant never forgets uh you know trope or phrase or whatever is kind of true like they can remember where a watering hole is like that they visited 20 years ago or something and they do actually like grieve and the 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 kids i mean man we have taken a turn greg on this podcast we've gone to like dead parents and dead elephants and like what happens we were just talking about a fun horror movie mhm mm very depressing yeah but you know <laughs> what uh, i i like to have people promote their charities on here and uh that's a great one you know because elephants definitely need support and uh yeah poaching sucks it does <laughs> yeah yeah anything else you got coming up i don't know we'll see i don't know we'll see We'll see. I mean, uh, maybe another one of these uh, creature features or something like that, um, you know. Well, yeah. I hope that they get you to the conventions. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I would... think of I, I think Barbarian, would, I think people would come out to see you. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. You know, talk to Richard. And I don't know how many of them he does. I've, I've, um, I haven't kept track of that, but I can't see him not being a draw. Yeah, I don't know how much he does either, but he he seemed to, yeah, it seems like he does does a lot, and it's a way to meet the fans and make some extra bucks. Well, it's you know what? It's it's bottle. a lot of fun. But if you do the milk bottle thing, I think that would be perfect. I I think you should go in that direction. I think so too. Yeah, because also at this point, it's not like people have merch or something that they can bring to sign, have me sign. You know, so I'll just mm -hmm. uh, make my own. <laughs> well people will have blu-rays hopefully of uh, yeah. barbarian i plan to get the blu-ray of it so Great. yeah there you go 
Well, you know what? It was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much for getting back to me on this. You know, I was so thrilled. I actually posted on Facebook the day after. I said, uh, I have somebody from a movie that's playing at our local Cinemax, Cine <laughs> Cineplex, yeah. coming on the show. And um, I got asked by a coworker at work last night, who is who do you have? And I told her about it, you know. <laughs> Uh, I said there's movie Barbarian playing at the mall, you know, and uh, um, and I said that I said I got the star of the movie. I've got the guy playing the large naked lady. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, uh huh, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> but it is a pleasure and an honor. I think this was great, you know, because you great. had the big key role in the movie. So this this was uh, great. If you're open to it, I know other podcasters who would probably love to have you on their show. Do you, you want me to uh, have them get in touch with you? Uh, sure, sure. I'm just kind of saying yes to everything right now, and then who knows? And then, then okay. at some point, I'll probably get on my high horse and then lock it down. No more. Only only ones with uh, this amount of followers or whatever. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what? I yeah. – um... <laughs> I'll see what next year what what uh, what you're doing and uh, and uh, if you're back doing Barbarian two, <laughs> <laughs> I know the sequel or the prequel, uh, or the prequel. That's what they're doing with Pearl. Could be. I'll, I'll be more than happy to have you back. Oh yeah, it would be my pleasure. Yeah. Next year though, if I when I, when I reach out, you gotta sing some dog songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. Go for it. I love my dog. I look at his face. It makes me laugh. Ha -ha. I love my dog. That's that's the that's I love my dog. It goes uh, on like that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh there you go look at that yeah this is the weird little album it's this card for this yoto player it's to like keep kids off of screens and stuff if, and it doesn't have a microphone so it's not listening to your children and then it looks like this old school nintendo thing or whatever i don't know you just like shove a card in and then it plays a, an album well there you go is that i've never seen that before i know it's a new thing but uh i think it might be catching on i don't know we'll see you should have had the one well, of those down there for Justin Long. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, exactly. Put that in his mouth. <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you so much, Justin. Before I let you, Justin. Hi, I'm Justin Long. Hi, how are you? Sorry. Uh, I'm so <laughs> happy yeah. to have you on here, Matthew. Before I let <laughs> you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? Oh, yeah. What would that entail? What do you want to do? Just state your name and state that you're in uh, Barbarian and say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Hi, I'm Matthew Patrick Davis from Barbarian, and I'm listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Mm -hmm. Now, this shirt was the closest I could get to uh, Barbarian, but uh, it's right. Princess Leia. Yeah. yeah. That That's <laughs> almost you in that movie, right? Exactly. She was also a victim. Uh, you know, being held against her will, and uh, and I, I'm a victim of Frank's too. But he didn't give me a, he didn't give me a little metal bikini. Yeah, but uh, she did get to choke Jabba the Hutt out. I know Frank didn't give me the pleasure. He he took his own life, and uh, I didn't get to choke him out with a chain. What took you so long? Why'd you let him get old? I know, I know. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's what's scary and kind of sad about it is like she is, even though she is now very much stronger than he is, you know, she still is scared of him, which I think is like what's so cool about that shot where she comes to the door and then recedes back into the darkness. You see like, oh, the mother is scared still of whatever's behind this door, which makes you go, oh, that's not a good sign for whatever's behind that door.
Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? I thank you so much for coming on here tonight. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I got uh, an overnight shift at the hospital, but uh, I did well, three interviews tonight, and I was. This is just a blessing to have you come on here, and uh, I I wish you luck, and I I hope to have you on here again. All right. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely. You, you take care. God bless you, man. Bye bye. Absolutely.